Welcome to the fifth video in the Intro to Tyke API management series. In this video, I'll be showing you how to bootstrap your developer portal and publish our configured API to the portal. Afterwards, I'll show you what the process looks like from an API developer's perspective, from requesting an API key, to sending a request, to looking at some analytics. Let's get started. If you've ever attempted to open the developer portal on your installation or on the cloud version of Tyke, it's likely that you've run into the issue where it says home page not found. Now the reason for this issue is because we haven't bootstrapped the developer portal. So today I'll show you how we can go through that bootstrap process. Before we begin, the first thing that we want to do is go into our HTTP bin demo API and make sure to add authentication to this API. Let's go ahead and update. Now the reason why we added authentication again is because if we publish a public API, we would ideally like the people who consume this API to be governed by some access rules. Let's take a look at a script that some of my colleagues at Tyke have written. The first thing we want to note is there's three variables that we should fill in. The dashboard base URL, the dashboard user API credentials, and the organization ID. If you're on a cloud installation, your URL will look something like this. Make sure to change it to what you have on your installation. Since I'm on a localhost installation of Tyke, what I want to do is just copy localhost and the port, flip back to the script, um, update my value without the trailing slash. For the user API credentials, all I have to do is go to my profile. For example, in the top right corner here, if I go to edit profile, I'll get my API access credentials right here. Let's go ahead and fill that in. And same thing with the organization ID. So we'll copy this ID and update this. Now you'll notice that I'm in the same directory as my bootstrap portal script. What I want to do is give executable permissions to my script, and I'll do that with chmod. Now all that's left to do is run the script. And you'll see that the portal has been created with an initialized catalog. Let's see what this looks like. Now I can click into my developer portal, and you can see that I have some bootstrapped content right here. Feel free to check the link in the description for a list of all the customers that have branded our developer portal and are using it in production today. We can take a look at some of the APIs that have been published in the catalog, which there are none, and we can also register or log in as a developer for our developer portal. Now how do we take an API and publish it to the API catalog? That's easy. We'll flip back into the dashboard, and on the left-hand side, we want to come down to the area that says Catalog underneath Portal Management. Here we can see that we don't have any APIs that are registered for the portal. What we want to do is go to Add a New API. We want to give our API a name, so for example, we can do HTTP bin API, and make sure that we apply a policy to this API. If you'll recall from before, this means that keys provisioned from this policy are governed by the rules of this policy. So in essence, developers or API consumers who try to access your HTTP bin API are bound by the rules of this policy here. We can give our API a description here, and we can also have markdown as well. I'm going to be lazy and just fill it out as API markdown. You'll notice that we can specify an email that can be notified when individuals request access to your API. And we can also add custom fields and values. One cool thing about the developer portal is we can also attach documentation. So for example, if you have your own Swagger API definition, you can paste it here, or we can do it from a Swagger URL. I'm going to cheat today and just paste in the pet store Swagger JSON. Now all that's left to do is hit save. And you can see that we have an enabled API with documentation attached. Now, if we come back to the developer portal and give it a refresh, as a developer, I can see that we have one API that's published for my consumption. We have a fully featured Swagger sandbox in here. Again, keep in mind that this is not accurate since we are reverse proxying to HTTP bin, but the documentation is for the pet store. Your customers can now go ahead, check out the documentation, and they can go ahead and actually try out the APIs. 
Now, as an API developer, if I want access to this published API, all I have to do is simply request an API key. It'll prompt me to log in. But first, let's go ahead and register. So suppose I am some portal developer at email.com with some password. And let's just go ahead and copy this email. Now I've signed up to the developer dashboard. So supposing that you've published your APIs, your developers or API consumers can now come to your catalog, browse the different APIs that you have, and even request an API key. We can go ahead and self-service APIs that are published to the catalog. Make sure to keep note of this API key because you won't be able to see it in the future. Let's tab back into Postman. Again, since we added authentication to our API and we try to make this request, we're missing the authorization field. So let's go ahead and add that. Now you can see as an API developer or consumer, I can make API requests to this protected API again. And additionally, I'm also governed by the low rate access that's specified in the policy of five requests every 60 seconds. What's cool is that since I'm a developer, I can also take a look at my own API dashboard. I can get a sense of all the API requests that I've made, as well as any errors that might've happened in that timeline of requests. I can see the APIs I've subscribed to and also the allowances for the APIs. Now on the flip side, as an API owner, I can also enable the setting where the developers have to request access to the keys. So for example, you can see that there's a list of key requests. If I go into the settings, I can restrict my developers from signing up, I can restrict my developers from logging in, and I can restrict the catalog access to only individuals who have registered and signed up for my developer portal. Under the API access tab, I can enable manual access approval, so I can have manual control over who gets API keys. So if I've enabled the manual access approval, then you'll see a list of pending keys and you'll see a list of ones that have been approved. Hopefully I've given you a good sense of what our API portal is capable of. In the next video, we'll take a look at some of the analytics that you can see when you use Tyke, as well as how to debug and go through some of the middleware. See you soon.